where we've been since four generations, 143 years, family owned, always family managed and run. Um, we always had a strong emphasis on engineering, pushing the boundaries. From my great grandfather who built the first motorboat together with Gottlieb Daimler, to my uh, grandfather winning a lot of motorboat races, and then my grandmother who ran the business, very unusual, from 1932 to the early 40s. And now it's my cousin and me, uh, and we know still are very strong engineering based. And we pride ourselves that we think long term. And as uh, our balance sheet shows, we're here to stay because we make sure we are a strong company with a very strong balance sheet and we want to be here for the next generation. I mentioned the first motorboat in the world. Uh, my uncle set the world record of diesel driven boats in the 1930s. Um, we manufactured the fastest gas turbine motor yard in the early 80s. Um, we manufactured the longest yard at over 180 meters, the biggest yard. We have built over 500 ships for military export. We took over the shipper that built the Bismarck in Hamburg, Blumen Foss, which is known in Australia because they built the Anzac frigate. We took them over two years ago. They've been um, not in good shape. And uh, that's why we took them over, reformed them and uh, getting them back into shape now. We will be using them to build the next German Corvette program, which we won and signed in 2017. Uh, before that, already we have exported over 500 ships worldwide. Many of them actually built overseas under our license with our assistance. Um, we've built some very outstanding yachts. We are now in the progress of setting up our new shipbuilding in Australia. A contract worth 2 billion euro from the German government for the next generation of Corvids where we are the main partner, the prime contractor, with two other partners, junior partners in 17. We are very proud and happy that we signed in 2018 the C1180 program in Australia. And there's a big German Navy program uh, for frigates, and that's our target to win next year, 2019. This region had ups and downs, clearly now, the Southeast Asia is the area with an enormous defense spending, which unfortunately results into a lot of tension. Um, and Australia is clearly the best choice to have a shipyard in this part of the world. Um, not necessarily they're going to build all ships in Australia, but we think the technology hub for Lursen for this region will be here in Perth with the intention to start with a C1180 program, create indigenous design capabilities, develop further designs here and then use Australia as a hub to export ships and technology to other countries. The OPV as it is now designed for Australia has enormous growth potential. The Australian C1180 is a truly offshore patrol vessel. Very strong seakeeping capabilities, a long duration, creature comfort, possibility to carry many people. Important, for example, in disaster relief or border operations. However, the gross potential of this vessel is such that you could equip it with a larger gun forward. You could equip it with ship-to-ship -ship missiles and much more defensive equipment. So you can actually fairly easily develop from the OPV a Corvette, fully armed Corvette. And from there, once you have made that step, you can create a family of Corvettes and possibly light frigates. So there is enormous, enormous flexibility in our design and the stability of our design is so big that we have this growth potential. Well, I think we need to look at two different levels. Let's first look at the what is traditionally understood as Australian industry content. Already before the decision that by the government that we are the preferred bidder, we had conferences all over Australia to get ourselves 
known to the local and medium-sized industries. We um, toured the country, we presented our design and opportunities and we have now already started producing um, the OPV together with a large number of local small and medium-sized enterprises, be it for the installation, be it for the interior, be it for pumps. Uh, the first steel got cut a while ago. This is Australian steel. So that's the level of having a solid Australian industry in the OPV program for Australia. Then comes the next level. The next level is how can we make use of the Australian industry, the Australian capabilities for the export market. We have made the clear commitment as a family to have Lurson Australia. Lurson Australia has then formed a joint venture with CIFMEC, our local partner here in Perth, called AMDEC. And this will be used to produce ships in Australia for the regional market. And clearly, the first step is to base the export model on the C1180 OPV. But the next step will be to develop in Australia variants of the C1180 OPV and to de ultimately to develop new ships to service the need in the region with then again as a next step use the so acquired design capabilities to develop an indigenous design for the next generation OPVs that will eventually come out of Australia for Australia. Well, we are in the process of setting up an office. Our partner CIFMEC is building a large shed which can be used for shipbuilding and ship maintenance. And clearly, we want this to be the focus of our industrial base for all this region and also countries outside the Asia Pacific region if the product is right. We have a very strong presence in the Middle East. And we do have some presence in the navies in Africa. And clearly we have an interest in uh, also developing this kind of market. And if a navy, let's say, from Africa is looking for an OPV and the Australian C-1180 ship fits that requirement, we would use Australia to even build a ship for Africa. Same for the Middle East. It's a bit dependent on the overall situation, but if they want a ship like the OPV, we would clearly would want to develop it in Australia, for the, even for the Middle East. Obviously, it's a very well-managed and organized country with long-term planning in the defense procurement, which is always good if you want to set up a business because it gives you much more planning horizon. Um, you have a perfect legal environment, you have investment safety, which these days is also important. You do have a good educational system, which is important because you need skilled labor and skilled engineers and skilled businessmen to run the business. So I think it's a, it's the, it's a mixture of great human resources. It's a picture of the um, investment environment and it's a geographic location that makes Australia so uh, attractive. Well, clearly Western Australia is closer to the possible nations of interest, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, same, same time zone like Singapore. So within Australia, Western Australia is really at the heart of where uh, the shipbuilding should take place. We have operations in many parts of the world. And when we asked for volunteers to come over to Australia to start the program, whereas normally it's difficult to convince the guys, oh, overseas and this is, there was absolutely no problem. When we said anyone volunteers for Australia, we actually had more volunteers than we needed. So I think it shows how attractive Australia, Western Australia is to Europeans and the same feeling of an attractive location, promising location, that our people have when they volunteer to come to Australia is with my cousin and me when we made the decision to come to Australia.